Today, we are going to paint this beautiful watercolor. I have heat embossed my 5x7 Strathmore watercolor card. Um, it's 110 pound watercolor card. They're acid free from um, Strathmore. It's one of my favorites. But we are, I've heat embossed the poinsettia from the poinsettia and pine cones stamp set from Rabbit Hole Designs. I've heat embossed heat embossed that in gold embossing powder and we are going to be doing water coloring and i'm going to be using the fumi fumu fumui fumui i think is how you say it don't hold me to that squirrel hair travel brushes they were kind enough to send these to me to try out and I absolutely love them. I have been playing with them for a little while and actually love them. I've never found a brush that I've actually loved like this <coughs> in a very long time. So I'm very happy about these. And I will talk more about this, but they're genuine squirrel hair. So if that's an issue, and they do, I think they have some, some synthetic brushes also, but they have a, they're a nice and heavy. Again, they're travel brushes. So you screw off the back and then you take and you slide that in. I suggest doing it wet. And while the point is down, you want to press that in and then slide it in and then screw it. I'm going to keep them just stored correctly all together because I'm won't well, I'll be using these in the studio. But they also came in this nice little leather pouch. Super fun. Um, so we're going to do this watercolor painting. Let me zoom in just a tad bit more. Again, these the travel this set came with a four, which is the one I use the most, an eight, and a size 12. Again, great sizes to start with. Um, when you first get them, they do have lots of sizing in them, so you need to clean them off. I'm going to use I'm going to use the eight on some of this today. But we will actually, we're just going to use the four. All right, so I'm going to load that up and I've got my brush. So I'm going to start with my pedal in the back. I'm going to load my paper. And I really liked these because one of the reasons is because they had a great, um, they held a lot of water, they had a great load capacity. So that was nice. I'm gonna pick up some of my Gamby Time B watercolors and I'm going to actually just drop in the red. You've seen me do this before. It's where I want it the darkest. So I'm gonna drop that in. And then we're also going to go ahead and add our red right here. I haven't even wet the paper over on this side because we're going to test this. And clean off the brush. And I'm going to take and pull the color out like we've done in the past. This is how much water is just in the brush. I'm able to pull this color out. With very little effort. So it gives me a nice pigment load. And some of that's because it is a natural hairbrush. But again, I'm pretty sure they have synthetic brushes also. So if you know natural hair is not for you, I'm sh pretty sure they have that. I did look on the website and I got a little overwhelmed because they have lots of choices and very reasonable prices. This set of brushes is only like $19 when I looked. So super affordable. Um, they also have a, if you reach, I think if you reach a certain amount, you get free shipping, but you can also, you can save 
if you go purchase anything from the website, link is below in the description. If you go purchase anything, use the discount code RICK at checkout and you will save 20%. And it's R-I-C-K, capital R-I-C-K, lower cases. All right, let's pick up some more water or more paint. Here. I'm super impressed at how much they pick up, how much water paint they actually hold, and how affordable they were. It's very rare. Now they are made in China. But again, it's still rare. Even a good quality paintbrush from China can be super expensive. I know some of the other ones that I have purchased have been, came from overseas and they were way more than 20 bucks for three brushes. I paid, I know for one, I know I paid over $30 for a brush, for just one brush. And while I was in school. But again, we're just going to paint our floral image here and talk about our brushes and talk about painting. When you're starting out in watercolor, you do want a nice set of brushes. It does help. It actually makes it a lot easier because they do help you with the amount of water you can put down. It's what we call flow. And pigment load is what the brush will pick up, which also has to do with your flow of your water, capacity of your brush. And y'all know me, if I'm not, if I didn't like them, I wouldn't have recommended. I won't recommend them. I must, I have to really like a product for me to recommend. Especially an art pro product. It allows me to drop in more color. I'm just dabbing off my brush on the side. Trying to make sure my head's not in the way. The size eight, and you can see this is something I would use more for a painting, like a real big painting, because it does put down a lot of pigment, they hold a lot of water.
So the eight and the 12, I would definitely use for like my paintings. But for my cards, I would definitely use the four. Unless I'm doing the background, then I would probably use the eight. Try to save our berries in there. That's why I did heat the resist. This is another sign of a good brush. When you can sit and push and pick up the color with a, just a thirsty brush, a really good brush, it will allow you to pick up the color super easily. I'm just moving that ink or pigment to the other sleeve over here. Just going to pull that out with just some water. Again, super impressed. And it's hard for me to be impressed with a art project or product. And I'm using the gas the gas Tambi watercolors because to me they're not the easiest to use. Because well, tr they're not a traditional watercolor anyway. They're like a, um, they're synthetic, but there's another term, and I can't think of that term now. Do I think they're bad? The paint's bad? No. They just, they're not a traditional watercolor. They're a little, they don't have a lot of flow capacity, but the brushes are handling them very well. And even, I even was able to go back in and pick up more of the paint and then move it around. So, it's a good thing. So again, we're going to continue painting. We're going to drop in our darkest color. And then we're going to pull those out.
and drop in a little bit more color. All right, let's go on, paint some more of our leaves. Remember the trick with watercolor is it will paint will flow where you have water on your paper. So if you don't want a area to be painted, don't add water. And I can tell you, these work super great with uh, real brush pens. And again, because I took them when Charles had his doctor's appointment the other day, he had um, a, gum, a gum graph. I took these and use them on while he had his little surgery. I was out in the lobby painting. Like I said though, super impressed with the brush. some more paint. Remember where one petal overlaps another, you're gonna have a stronger shadow there. I'm gonna just add, keep going. thirsty brush softening that line out that I've added more color to pull out our next sections
Remember, sometimes you do have to turn your painting so you can see better. Don't be afraid to turn your painting. Just coming in, adding my darks in there. So those petals are overlapping our others. Also, don't be afraid to tilt your paper to make it move where you want it to go. But again, the brush works super well. And in case you didn't know, this set was designed by Kelly Taylor. It was her first stamp set she designed. leaf Got a little fuzz in my 
painting there. So I want to get that out. Add our second layer. All right, we're gonna come in and add our second layer. I'm gonna speed this up. All right, we're gonna paint in our pine cones. So I'm just gonna drop in some water. And drop in a couple different browns. Then I'll come back and add some darker color in there. Once that starts drying back a little bit, dropping in my darker colors where I know at the inside the parts of the pine cones so I'm letting that flow out this is the easiest way to do the pine cones Let the water do the work for me. This is our second brown. This is more of a sienna color. Just adding that into different spaces, making sure I have my lightest color still in there. That way I have my values. All right, so for our pine straw, super easy. We're gonna leave some white. I'm gonna pick this pine olive green color. 
This is where the test on the brush is really going to come in. Because we are going to do very light pressure, light strokes. Brush handles it very well. I can get a nice sharp point. So, again, does very well. I just have a very light hand. Pulling that out and letting the tip of the brush touch the paper. I'm kind of pressing in and pull, lifting up. I do want a contrast between the greens, so that's why I chose a different green this time. Again, don't be afraid to turn your paper. Right, we're going to add a little bit of a different shade of green. Add some of our peacock color. Again, using that same, just the tip of the brush. And the brush handles it very well. This is, I've only loaded the brush once with this color and you can see how far it is going. So again, that's like I said, beginning has great load capacity. I'm able to get a nice sharp point. I'm able to lay down a nice flat layer of color with the belly of the brush. Super, most, it's hard to find a brush that will do all that. For a quality, a good price. All right, now for our berries, I'm just going to drop in a couple different reds. The eye naturally will see different shades. So 
so that Rick doesn't have to do a lot of work. All right, we're gonna do our centers. Of our poinsettia. And drop in some color. And I'm gonna take just a damp brush and kind of pull what I laid down around through the other ones so that they have different values. All right, we're gonna add just a little around our poinsettia and then we're gonna call this done. So I'm going to take my size eight and I'm going to Come in right along the edge. It's got a nice light blue. Fade that out. This is where I like a bigger brush is my backgrounds. Now, even in those little areas, I can get some color down in there. Even with this larger brush. Don't want to do too much blending in there. So I want to keep my edges nice and sharp. A little bit of, bit, a bit of softening is fine. I don't mind a little softening because that's going to give us a nice little blur. A little wintry feel.
some just softening, adding a little color here and there. But all in all, super impressed with the brushes. I can still get in there with my darker pigments in the tiny areas, even with the larger brush. And I have equal, easily controllable flow of the paint and again they hold just as much water load and capacity as the other smaller brushes which is great Alright, all in all, love the brushes, think they're fabulous. I will finish the rest of this card off screen and you can see it. Actually, all I'm going to do is add dry and add maybe some highlights with the gel pen. Actually, that's all I'm going to do. Alright, so that's it for me. Again, you can get these brushes, link is below. And make sure you use the discount code RICK for 20% off. <clears throat> And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Love you.